supplies and materials that you will need to make the bunting. We'll start off with the paper templates. So you'll need to cut those out. You'll also want some uh, cardstock or some file folder, just some type of thicker paper where you can trace the paper templates onto that. It just makes tracing onto the fabric easier. You'll need uh, paper scissors to cut um, out the paper templates and the cardstock templates. Then you will need um, fabric for your flags. The amount of fabric you will need will depend on how many flags you want to make and what size of flags you want to make. So there's a small triangle, a larger triangle, and then there's the shape that looks like this that you could do a couple different sizes. So the when you're making the flags, to have the double-sided flags, you'll need two pieces, a front and a back, for every flag. So that um, will give you an idea of how much fabric you're going to need. So you'll need fabric. You'll also need some double-wide um, bias tape. Uh, you can get some commercially made uh, double-wide bias tape, or you can make your own. And then just uh, some other sewing supplies, uh, rotary cutter and fabric scissors. You can use one or the other to cut out the fabric. You'll need um, either clips or pins. Uh, I like using the clips for this project. You also need some type of marking utensil and then you can either use a um, cutting mat or a seam gauge or a measuring tape for measuring the distance between the flags. But, and then of course your sewing machine and thread and needles and that type of stuff. So these are the things that you will need in order to make the double-sided bunting. It's now time to sew the flags together. You need to get two flags and put them right sides together. You want to line up the points and the raw edges. Then pin or clip in a couple of places to hold the flags together. You'll start sewing in the upper right hand corner using a quarter inch presser foot. If you don't have one, use the edge of a regular presser foot as the guide. Sew down the side until you get to the point. Leave the needle in the fabric, pivot, making sure you still have that quarter inch seam allowance, and then sew up the other side. To make your sewing go faster, you can chain sew the flags so you don't need to cut the thread. Put two more flags right sides together, matching up the points and the raw edges, and then sew them like you did the first one. Once you finish sewing the flags, the next step is to trim the end point close to the seam. Then trim some of the seam allowance on either side of the point to reduce bulk. Now turn the flag right side out and pull some of the end point out with your fingers. To get a sharp point, you can use a pin and insert it into the fabric and gently pull out. Do this several times until you get the point to come out all the way. Make sure to be careful so you don't snag any threads.
Once you get the dog ears cut off the top of the bunting, you wanna go ahead and lay all of the flags out that are gonna be on one strand. You wanna take your uh, double wide bias tape, either the store-bought or the one that you've made, and you wanna find the center of that and mark it. Then you wanna find out where the middle of the flags would be. So I've got 14 flags, and so uh, right over here is my uh, seventh one, and so this is going to be uh, the flag that is going to be right near the center. So the other seven would be on this side. I'm going to go ahead and lift up the um, bias tape, insert the flag in the middle, and then just fold it over. And I just use one clip to hold this in place. When I'm sewing, I'll uh, make slide adjustments to make sure that the top of the flag is touching the top of the fold. Then um, I'm basically just gonna move this down. I'm gonna use my um, marks on my cutting board to go ahead and put these, um, the flags in. So uh, again, just lifting up the double uh, fold bias tape, setting it in there. I'm just using an inch between each flag and um, then I would continue. If you don't have a cutting board, then you can use a, a measuring tape or a seam gauge like this. Uh, just so that the distance between each flag is um, is even across the the bias tape, and then once we do that, uh, we head over to the sewing machine. To sew the flags, I used a quarter inch presser foot, but when I sew the double wide bias tape together along with the flags, then I want to use a regular presser foot because I want the ability to be able to move my needle uh, back and forth so I can get close to the edge of the, um, the double wide bias tape. So if you notice on the bias tape that one side of it, you can see a slight edge of um, the other side. So this would technically be the front and then this would be the back. When I sew, I want this side up so that I can make sure that I am sewing right along the edge of this um, top piece. Uh, when I sew it, I do like to have it, um, the edge of my foot riding along here because then it is easy for me to kind of keep track of my straight line. And that's why I like to be able to use this presser foot because I'm able to move my needle closer to the, the edge. And then that's what I can watch is um, the bias tape going right along that um, edge of my presser foot. So when we start sewing, we just go ahead and uh, start sewing from the end. So as the edge of the flag gets near the presser foot, I'm just gonna double check and make sure that the flag the raw edge of the flag is up against the fold of the presser foot. The next flag is coming up, so I'll do the same thing. And then I just continue sewing until I get to the other end of the bias tape. 